Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the new hair system in Blender 3.5, including the new nodes that have been added and the new quick fur method. So we can create something like this little carpet and not just use it for hair or fur. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. To start with, we're going to define the shape of the rug that we want to create. For this video, we'll keep it real simple. I'm simply going to stretch out this plane and bevel the vertices. There, nothing too fancy. Next, we want to create the rim that goes around the outside of our rug. We'll do that by adding a geometry node tree to our carpet. We want this just to be along the outer edge of our plane. So if we take our geometry and do a mesh to curve, this will give us the edges of our mesh turned into curves. Now in this case, this is the shape that we want. Because our plane was turned into an end gon there's only the edges around the outside. However, if you do something more complicated, Let's say I take the knife tool and cut this in half. And then I connect up my mesh to curve. You'll see that I've got an edge running down the middle here. Let's see what happens when I take the next step. I want to turn this into a tube that runs around the outside for our seam. So I'll take my mesh to curve and turn that curve back into a mesh. We'll use the curve to mesh node and then we'll use a curved circle as the profile curve. Now, of course, this starts out really large, so we'll want to bring the radius down, maybe to a quarter of an inch. Now you see why this center edge is a problem. It's created a seam that runs down the middle of the carpet. So we need to get rid of this edge. We just want the outside. One way we can accomplish this is by using the triangulate node. This means that all of the faces will be triangles. And now we can see that any edge that's in the middle of our object has two faces connected to it. Any edge that's on the outer rim only has one face connected to it. So we can use this information to delete some edges. I'll use the geometry, delete geometry node, and put it in edge mode. We'll want to use the mesh edge neighbors node. This gives us the number of faces connected to each edge. And we said if an edge has two faces connected to it, that means it's an internal edge. So we want to delete it. So if we take this and say EQ, so equal to two, that will be our selection for deletion. Now we're left with just the outer rim. The next thing we'll want to do is add our original geometry back in. If you have the node wrangler and add on enabled, you can press control shift and then right click on this group input. This will drag out a line. I'm going to hover over what I want to connect this with. And that's this curve to mesh node and release. That will give me a join geometry node over here. So now you can see that I've got my original shape plus this outer edge. Now this shape is actually two meters by four meters. So this is actually about a six by 12 rug, which is a whole lot bigger than I want to deal with. I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down. So it's about one meter tall. And then I'll press control A to apply scale. There, that's a lot better. Now let's go ahead and start adding the shag of our rug. With our object selected, I'm going to press F3 and type in fur. We want to choose quick fur. Immediately, we get what looks like a bunch of grass coming out of our rug. Next, select the fur and go to our modifiers panel. You can see that five modifiers have been added to the curves object that was connected under our plane. The first one is the set hair curve profile. 
This is going to help decide what shape each strand of hair takes. Since this is supposed to be the yarn of a carpet, there's really no taper to these strands. So our shape here is going to be zero. We can also determine how thick each of these strands is going to be. And because we're modeling this to real life size, we can use real life dimensions here. I would say a strand of yarn that's used in a rug is maybe about three or four centimeters in diameter. So for this radius, I'm going to go ahead and put 1.5 millimeters. Next, we have the interpolate hair curves node. This is actually going to take the few strands of hair that were created when we added the fur and translate them into a much higher density. You'll see if I go into edit mode on my fur, you can see each of this, the curves that are currently in this model. And those have been interpolated up to what you see here. We're going to need more density than this. So I'm going to bump this up to say something like 15,000. We'll go with that for the moment. Next, we have the hair curves noise. This says how much of a wavy pattern is going to be in our carpet. I'm going to drop this to zero so that you can see its effect. While the individual strands are still squiggly, the overall pattern has now been straightened out. We can of course come back in later and add more of this if we want to. Next is the frizz. When we lower this, we see that the individual strands straighten out. So for now, I'll put in just a tiny bit of frizz and a tiny bit of noise. Last is the surface to form node. This helps keep the curves connected to the base object that they were put in with. If I go to side view and zoom in, you'll see that each of these squares is in centimeters. So actually, the shag of this carpet is about 10 centimeters tall. That's pretty deep. We need to shorten these up a bit. To do that, we want to trim down our curves. So in order to trim it, I'm going to add a new geometry nodes modifier to our hair curves. The node we want to add is a curve trim curve node. We'll go ahead and move this all the way to the top of our stack. So it's actually trimming down our original guide curves. Now we'll simply lower the end value till it's the depth we want let's say about three centimeters. I'm going to turn off denoising for the moment so that we can see a little clearer what's going on. I'll connect the end here to my group input. So now I can control the length of my carpet from my modifier stack. Let's go ahead and add a material to our carpet. I'll go into my material properties, I'll click Use Nodes on this fur material and choose a color. There, this doesn't look too bad. We'll choose our plane and assign it the same material. We do want our rim to also have that material, so we'll go into the geometry nodes attached to our original object and add in a set material node and connect that to our input. Now under our modifier panel, we can assign the material we want for the rim. To smooth, to smooth this out a little bit, I'll go ahead and add a modifier after this geometry nodes, which is a subdivision surface. I can do that simply by pressing Control 2 while having my object selected. We can see our area here is a little sparse in some places, so we'll go back to our curves and adjust some settings. We want more strands, so we'll go back to the interpolate hair curves. We'll go down to the density, and we'll bump this up. Let's try 25,000. This is looking better, but still we've got some spots that we can see are a little weird, and have some patchiness. We can help prevent these areas by adding some more geometry to our original object. I'm going to hide my curve objects for a moment, go into edit mode and inset my shape with I. 
I'll do it again. And then I'm going to add some other cuts using my knife tool. Now back in rendered mode, we can see that these are spread out a lot better. Now, depending on what kind of angle you're going to use for your shots, you may or may not need to continue to add more density to these objects if this isn't dense enough. Because if you're at an angle, it's going to be hard to tell that there's enough gaps. Just increase your density until you're happy with the result. Next, you may want to put some dense or flattened parts into your rug. You can do this by going to your curves object and going into sculpt mode. Here you can simply use the comb tool to add some places where your carpet is laid over. Of course you don't have to have just a simple material like this. In shading mode we could do something as easy as adding a checker texture. And then we can plug in a texture coordinate into our checker texture. I'll choose the object texture coordinates as that's going to give us a nice straight look. Of course, if we wanted to go in and give the rim a different material, we could do that. Now from here, you can make any kind of artistic decisions that you want. If you want longer strands, or more noise, or more frizz, you can add that. And here we go, with a simple HDRI added as a background and a plane with a wood texture put under it, we get a pretty decent looking render. Of course, this is just scratching the surface what you can do with the new included hair nodes that have been added to Blender 3.5. If you want to check out the project file for this video, you can pick it up on my Patreon. It's available there to my supporters. Speaking of which, my Patreon supporters have been awesome. I'm coming back from a little bit of a break, but they've been supporting me the whole time, and I really appreciate that. Anyhow, I hope this video helps you out. I hope it gives you some other types of ideas that you can use the new hair system in Blender 3.5 for things other than just hair or fur. And as always, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. So, until next time, I'll catch you later.